Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by Hero Bullion. I am Yankee Stacking, and I'm here with my co-host, Silver Dragons. What's up, Yankee? How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm excited for this one, man. Four ways to be a powerful silver stacker. Uh, yeah, we need to be powerful silver stackers, guys. And uh, we're going to give you four tips, four, four ways that uh, we think can really help you out. So what's our first way, SD? It's really important that you have the right mindset when you're stacking silver. Mm. Um, so think long term. That's, that's really uh, what you need to take away from this. So, you know, avoid the short term hype. There's been lots and lots of, uh, of hype on silver, uh, mm -hmm. but I actually did a video uh, not too long ago, the truth about silver. And I talk about how, you know, this right here, this is what you buy to stack and hold for a long period of time. This mm -hmm. is not a get rich quick scheme. I saw you that know? video. That was a good one. Yep. I, pre I, I appreciate it, Yankee, but that's not what this is. This is a long term storage of wealth. It's a hedge. It's insurance. This is so many things, but it's not buy now, sell in a few days, and make a quick buck. At least not for me. I mean, some people try and play that game, but typically that's not what you want to be doing when you're looking at physical silver, right? Totally agree. You know I'm a prepper stacker, so I think something big is going to happen, and I believe it's going to happen in my lifetime. Actually, I think something massive is going to happen this decade. But at the same time, I'm not saying... It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen next week. I mean, a dollar collapse or a crash in the COMEX doesn't happen overnight. I, I think that the COMEX might never crash. You know, uh, every time they get close, they just change the rules. They they can do that. I That's, mean, true. That's true. You know, and so highly yeah. manipulated. I do think they're still going to lose control of it. I think we're going to lose control of a lot of things. But, you know, it's a good point. Short term hype should not be what we focus on it should be long-term stacking and it's not just with silver 2000 it was the new economy yankee don't worry about prices for stocks don't worry about earnings nothing matters anymore it's a new economy there's nothing you can do that you're going to lose money on it was insane back then what happened well i mean the internet's obviously still here it flourished but the dot-com bust hurt a whole bunch of investors who bought into the hype. Fast forward, you know, go to 2006. This is what people were saying. Real estate, it never goes down. No, Just right? buy real estate. It, that's It'll all it matters. Fine. You can't lose. And then you, you buy it up and then you- It's not a bubble. I know it's not a bubble, right? You know, and they were leveraging it and all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, you know, real estate, I think is a, still a, a really good place to invest in, in some uh, you know areas of it. But speculators, lost a lot of money. They got clobbered in many property classes back in 2006 and 2008, actually, in 2009. Today, I'm going to say it, man. Bitcoin. It's the future. No, it's not Bitcoin. It's Dogecoin. Oh. No, it's not Doge, Dogecoin. It's, it's NFTs. Dude, have you heard about non-fungible tokens? Complete joke. It's insane what's going on. So, same hype. It's a scam. It's a scam. Like, okay, obviously, you know, this is Precious Metals channel, right? We don't really get into the cryptos that no, much. No. Yes, Bitcoin does have some utility in making transactions, okay? There's fees. It takes a long time. But you can make some transactions. Uh, Dogecoin, oh, man, there's so much hype. But I, it, that is just a meme, really. The whole thing's <laughs> then, a pyramid scheme, dude. It, it yeah. is. Remember yeah. I said the internet was still here? Real estate right. was still here? Right, right. Digital currency will be the future of all our transactions, SD. But I do not believe that Bitcoin is going to be the digital currency with you know that we pay our mortgages with or our no. taxes with or no. our groceries with. No, uh-uh, no. it's hype. So anyways, back, back to silver. Don't believe all the hype. You'll be a much stronger silver stacker if you avoid that, focus on the long term, and, you know, get ready. Because I do think we are headed towards a crisis. In fact, I would love to show a chart for you, SD. 
Let's bring on the charts. That, that will just give, I think, some context of what could happen. And, and again, that long-term mindset that we want to instill in people. This is the uh, silver bull market back in 1976 to 80, as I'm sure oh, you remember. The Hunt Brothers. Yeah, no, was... right? Look how long it didn't move much during this bull market. It just traded sideways for True. years. And then the last 99% of that bull market is when it exploded. So when a crisis happens, it happens slowly then all at once. And look at look at the other line. This is this is the current bull market we're in in silver. Look at the game. Wow. Do you know what the price of silver would be if it if it did just what it did back in 1980 and went up, you know, over 1200%? It would be $160 an ounce. There's your wow. triple digits over. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think we could see that in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but, but again, you know, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. No. You, you stack it. You be hold patient. it. It's yeah. your wealth storage. Mm -hmm. If it does blow up, cool. <laughs> I but, know, right? <laughs> but that's not necessarily why you should be buying it, mm. at least not heavily. What's another way we can be a more powerful silver stacker? Well, I mean, one thing that people should be doing is dollar cost averaging, right? You don't take your whole savings and put it all into silver right away. You know, you buy a little bit over time. And, and I actually did talk about this in my other video, mm -hmm. the uh, silver prices up, silver stacking on a budget video three days ago. You need to buy in chunks. Um, so that's if you're converting savings into you know, precious metal savings really is what it is. But mm -hmm. converting USD into silver, you know, the, a little bit at a time. And that's what I've been doing. That's right. what you've been doing. That's the way to do it. You takes know? discipline though, doesn't it? It does, especially <laughs> if you've got that fiat sitting there and you're just looking at inflation <laughs> saying, why am I holding cash? <laughs> but, that's, but, but at the same time, that's not a bad idea to keep some powder dry, right? No, 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 no. You got to have some ready to roll. Mm -hmm. And you do have to have some cash for emergencies, mm -hmm. of course. Right. Um, but yeah, it does take discipline. But if you want to be a powerful silver stacker, that's the way to do it. Dollar cost average. And then over time, you'll have an average price that you paid for your silver. And that's better than just having one point on the chart because you could be a little high, you could be a little low when you buy, um, but why risk it when you could just average it? I think dollar cost averaging is the way to go. Never fully, in my opinion, stop buying silver completely. Right, and I've been buying you know, a little bit here and there. I will mm -hmm. say uh, this year and in, in 2020, I bought less than I was in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, silver was just so much cheaper back then. But I'm still buying. I recently picked up uh, 100 ounces mm -hmm. on the first. Mm -hmm. And uh, got some physical at my local coin shop. Bought some online. And, yeah, I'm still pulling the trigger when I can. But definitely, mm -hmm. definitely uh, keep some powder dry. Be ready for the dips. Uh, buy, buy when it's down. When you see silver in the red, that's when you pull the trigger. We've seen it. You know, up a dollar, dollar fifty the last few days, so it would have been better to buy before that. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race, people. It really does. And I do want to shout out Hero Bullion. That is a great website to check out. Uh, they definitely have some Insock Silver for you. Some really cool stuff in here. Um, great prices too. Yes, great customer service. Great shipping. It comes to you fast. Uh, Jake does a great job of uh, packaging it up, making it uh, special for you. And, oh, remember that one? Oh, the five ounce infinity high release. I know. You know, definitely check out herobullion.com for dollar cost averaging your silver purchases. How about the so, third way? I feel like this one is more your wheelhouse, Yankee. So yeah. uh, why don't you take the lead on this? <laughs> you know, I really have a passion for macroeconomics. If you watch my channel, you know I like to intersperse silver stacking and prepping videos with what's happening in our economy and what I think is absolutely coming. And I think that one way that people can become a much stronger silver stacker is to expand their economic IQ. 
So you, you mean just learn more about economics in general, right? Yeah, I think it's important for people to understand what, you know, what's the difference between Keynesian economics and Austrian economics? How MMT, modern monetary theory, or what I like to call more money today, is going to affect <laughs> our lives. Um, or our kids' lives, really. <laughs> exactly, and our children and our children's children. How about UBI, Universal Basic Income? It's here now. What does that mean? And what does it mean to stacking, you know? When you watch the economic realities that we're going through, it will help you understand why you stack and how much to stack, what what makes sense for you and your personal finances. Sure. Um, you know, here's another one. History. Okay, again, expanding your economic IQ when it relates to history. We need to understand, you know, what has happened to world reserve currencies in the past. Can I show you another little picture? Let, but, let's see it. You know, this hits home for me. Oh, yeah. These are global reserve currencies, right? Right. Portugal, right. Spain, Netherlands, France, Britain. It's about 80 to 100 years. Somewhere in that time frame, they fail and we have a reset and we change our reserve currencies. I think that's coming again. And I think it's gonna be a big shift away from the US dollar. So again, that that's one thing. Here's yep. something else to understand too, the debasement of our currency. This is nothing new. This has happened in you know ancient Greece. This happened with Rome. All fiat currencies fail. Again, check this out. Look, this is a very interesting graphic on the Roman debasement of silver. You can see what they did to their currency as it got less and less percentage of silver within it. Wow. It, it's it's what governments do. Yeah, and, and we and we do still see this today. Obviously, with US currency, mm -hmm. uh, we no longer have the constitutional silver like you were showing on your screen, Yankee. Exactly. Silver dimes, silver quarters, half dollars. They only made those until 1964. That was it. And now we have clad. So really just educate yourself. You know, that's right. what this whole uh, way to be a powerful silver stacker. Educate yourself. Keep on mm -hmm. learning. Never stop learning. And whether mm -hmm. that be reading or watching YouTube videos or whatever, mm -hmm. it's very, very important. People should know about... 1913 when the federal reserve was created and the mandate that they had then and how it's changed so much Bretton woods in 1944 the nixon shock in 1971 oh. we, with the gold standard right 1998 did you know that for the first time ever the federal reserve failed to stimulate economic growth or inflation by lowering interest rates can i show you another chart that just just shows you that the end game is here. Check this out. Right there, 1998. That was when we crossed the Rubicon in terms of what the Fed was able to do. Up till that point, they were able to gin it with the velocity of money, make sure things were worked. The debt was growing, the GDP was growing, but then all of a sudden, it didn't work anymore. The debt was rising so fast that even though they attempted to stimulate the economy, it didn't work. We had the financial crisis. We had COVID-19. That was a big milestone. So again, history. It's very important that we learn from it. Yeah, and, and the, the national debt is <laughs> growing at a faster and faster rate. I mean, the projections are scary. I mean, we're looking at a hundred trillion possibly in the next decade. All right. So that was the third way that I think that we can really become more powerful silver stackers. Let's just wrap it up with the final one. All right. What do we got, Yankee? Diversification. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, and, and I know some people that just want to stack. That's it. hundred percent. And I'm like, mm, that is probably not the wisest thing to do. Yeah, but you could do this, Yankee. Oh, I know I could do this. <laughs> Come on. I agree. It's fun. It's fun to hold real money, right? 
<laughs> you can't do that with your other investments, Yankee. Come on. Actually, that's not quite true. I can okay. drive down the road and go up to a property that I own. I can see other properties that I am a private mortgage lender for and touch it. It's real, tangible assets, right? Yep. I think that's important. And yes, sometimes... We invest in paper assets. I'm investing in uh, agricultural stocks, wood stocks. I'm, you know, really trying to look for ways to invest in uh, commodities that I believe are highly undervalued. I did a video on it not too long ago. How about you? Do you uh, diversify in other ways too, other than precious metals? Well, yeah. I mean, I have my 401k mm -hmm. and uh, I've been putting money away as much as I can there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're working to buy our house currently. I'm a little bit younger than you, I Yankee. Know. So uh, yeah, you should be diversified for sure. And you know, what percent you want to put into precious metals varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, some people are super into silver and gold. You know, they're looking at like half their portfolio. I think that's too high. Mm -hmm. I think you probably agree. I do. Um, probably start out somewhere like 10%, right? And then see, feel it out. But yeah, absolutely. You got to diversify. And the other thing too is diversify among the precious metals. I yes. talk about this time and time again. Don't just buy silver. Buy silver <laughs> and gold. Some people get into mm -hmm. platinum and mm -hmm. palladium and, and, you know, maybe rhodium or some of the other ones. But really... The, the two powerhouses are silver and gold, and you should have some of each. You know, I, I think even platinum and palladium, rhodium are a good thing to invest in in the papers markets. I personally don't stack them because, well, for one, they have never been monetary metals. Only well, silver and gold have, right? And uh, there was, you know, a few platinum uh, mm, coins and yeah. things. Very, very rare, though. Sure. It's not, a not, it's not seen as a monetary metal, though. No. Ever, no, really, no. in history. For yeah, a lot of reasons. Really. I mean, I think it's platinum that has a very, very high uh, melting temperature. So it doesn't make sense yep. for them to, you know, make coinage out of platinum. Yeah, right. it, it's it's very hard uh, to get the images on there. Mm -hmm. I should have brought out some of my platinum coins, sure. but like the American Platinum Eagle, mm -hmm. the the design is so basic mm -hmm. compared to the other ones because that's the that's the only way they can do it. So, it's true. so remember, people, diversify your investments, however it fits for you and your personal economic situation. But don't just, in my opinion, and I think in ST's opinion too, don't put it all in silver. No. Diversify. All and right. that is four ways to be a powerful silver stacker. All four right. ways right there. That's right. <laughs> and we hope you enjoyed our discussion today. We'll see you next time on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.